Well, friends, good morning. good morning. Welcome to church. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much for uh, coming out today. It's nice and cold, isn't it? Uh, but hopefully it's warmer in here than it is outside, and uh, your presence makes it even warmer. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Good morning if you're with us online as well today. Uh, thank you for connecting with us. Whether you're here in person or online, it's great that you're here. Uh, for those that are with us online today, uh, why not take a moment, say hi in the chat so we know you're here. Uh, also, take a moment to click the share button in the video. Uh, takes two seconds, and who knows what God can do. Such an easy way to invite someone to church with you today. Lots of uh, newish faces in church today. Great to see you. Uh, even though there's fewer people than normal, there's lots of faces that I've not yet seen. So welcome, uh, especially to you. And don't rush off uh, at the end. Do hang around. It will be great to connect with you afterwards. This morning is a uh, communion service, and so if you're with us in person, as you uh, came in, you should have been offered uh, a little communion cup. Um, if not, uh, do wave, and one of our welcome team will gladly get one to you. If you're with us online today, uh, we'd love it if you could join us for communion too. And so why not take a moment, grab some uh, bread and some juice or whatever you have to hand uh, so that we can share communion all together a little bit later. Um, Children's Church is back today. Well, hey. Um, and so if you're with us and you go to primary school, uh, any children of primary school age are more than welcome to go out to Children's Church. Um, all we ask is that we make sure that children are registered uh, for Children's Church. And so if you're visiting us today, if, you're, if today's your first time in church and you'd like to go to Children's Church, you're very welcome. Um, Mum or Dad, could you please uh, grab your phone, head online to chingfordcong.org.uk forward slash children. Um, and you can uh, just take a couple of minutes now to register any children online, uh, and then they're free to go out to Children's Church. If you are uh, a technophobe and you don't want to use your phone, then do speak to... Where's Nikki? Nikki's waving uh, at the back. If you see Nikki, she'll have a paper form that you can fill in instead. Uh, but the quickest and easiest way, on your phone, chingfukong.org.uk forward slash children, and then they are free uh, to head out to Children's Church today. Has anyone been using, who, who took one of the Bible in a Year sheets last week? Uh, has anyone been using it through this week? Uh, good stuff, well done. If you have, you would have uh, come across these words uh, earlier this week. This is from Job. And uh, these words are in Job chapter 9. And it comes after uh, everything gets thrown at Job. His world gets turned upside down. And you know that feeling when everything goes wrong and you can't see anything good? And you can't see where God is at work. And, uh, and so Job, in his moment of despair, we see these words. Job 9, verse 32 to 35. God is not a mortal like me, so I cannot argue with him or take him to trial. If only there was a mediator between us, someone who could bring us together. The mediator could make God stop beating me, and I would no longer live in terror of his punishment. Then I could speak to him without fear. But I cannot do that in my own strength. Do you notice the irony in Job's words? If only. If only there was a mediator. If only there were someone that could be a go-between between me and God. Well, friends, we know that there is, don't we? And his name is Jesus. Uh, and so today we want to uh, worship our faithful God. Because we have a go-between. Let's stand. Uh, why don't we pray together and then we'll sing together. Lord, thank you for this new day. Thank you for the time that we have right now to set aside whatever else the week that has passed or the week that is ahead carries. And thank you for this time that we have to pause to meet with you, to celebrate your faithfulness and your goodness, to meet with each other and be encouraged. And Father, we pray right now that you would come by your Spirit, meet with us, encourage us, draw us to yourself, and have your way in this time that we share together. In Jesus' name, amen. Lovely stuff. Let's worship together.
Lord, you are worthy to be praised because yours is a beautiful name, a wonderful name, a powerful name. You are worthy to be praised because you are faithful. Your name is above all names. You are loving shepherds. You are Lord above all lords. Will you accept our praise today? Father, we pray that as we've sung those words, they wouldn't just be words that pass our lips, but uh, you would accept the worship of our hearts right now. You're a good God, and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do take a seat. Isn't God good? Isn't it good to be able to worship together? And uh, it was good to hear you show up towards the end of that time of worship together. And uh, (laughs) praise God. There's more of you here than there were a couple of moments ago, so welcome. And uh, we want to say, as always, a special shout out to you if you're new uh, with us today. If you're in church, and uh, today is your first time in church, and there's a handful of you today, special shout out to you. If you're with us in church and you're new, as you leave, please make sure that you grab one of these postcards. Uh, Don't say we don't give you anything. There's a postcard in the entrance that says, welcome welcome home. Do grab one as you leave. Um, Why? Because we'd love to connect with you, to welcome you home. Uh, Don't be a stranger or a visitor just once. And if you take one of these cards as you leave, on the back are three very simple ways that you can get connected to the life of the church here. And uh, if you're you're techie, use your phone, scan the QR code on the front, and that will take you to a short form that we'd love you to fill in Um, Not so we can hound you, but just so I can touch base with you this coming week to welcome you, uh, say hi, and uh, see how we can support you. If you're with us online, and today is your first time with us, or you're new-ish with us, and you've not yet got connected, uh, we don't want you to miss out either. Why don't you either click the link in the description of today's video, or head online to our website, chingforcong.org.uk forward slash new, and uh, do the same. We'd We'd love to connect with you and welcome you home into the family of this church. Small groups are back this week. Well, hey. Um, And so, as we mentioned last week, small groups from this week are all together. We're going to be starting uh, Discipleship Explored, which over, I think, eight weeks, um, 
journeys through the book of Philippians, and it will be someone that's not me on the videos. Don't share that bit. Um, someone that's not me on the videos, uh, journeying through the book of Philippians, looking at what does it mean to be a disciple? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Uh, why do we do what we do? If you've not yet joined a small group, this is a perfect time. As we start something new over the next eight weeks, this is a perfect time to uh, connect with a small group. If you don't like it, at the end of Discipleship Explored, you can step away again. But I reckon you'll love it. And so if you'd like to join a small group, uh, you can either do that online, chingforkong.org.uk forward slash groups, um, or the groups that have got spaces, the Tuesday evening group is full, the Sophie's Thursday evening group is full, the ones that have got spaces are Anna and Lee is online group. So if you'd like to join an online group on a Wednesday evening, uh, see Anna or Leah, uh, who are down the front. Um, or the Thursday morning group in church has got spaces. And the Thursday evening group at my house has got spaces. If you'd like to join either of those groups, see me. Uh, or you can join either of them online. And uh, we're looking forward to getting going with Discipleship Explored this coming week. Children's Church, time for you to leave us. Uh, you will be coming back, and we look forward to hearing what you've been getting up to. But have a great time. And why don't you go with Victoria and Leah. Uh, and again, if you're new in church today and would like to go out to Children's Church, you're very welcome to. Uh, Ash, if you wait just for a second for a leader, that would be great. Uh, nice one. Off you go. Have a lovely time. And we look forward to hearing what you've been getting up to when you come back. Nice one. Why don't we pause and pray? And they've just gone, so we can talk about them. Let's pray for our children's church as they've gone. Let's pray that they'd have a, uh, a great time, uh, but most importantly that they'd meet with God in their groups together. Uh, lots of our children and youngsters we've not seen uh, back yet since we've reopened from, from lockdown. Let's remember them in prayer. And... But also as we're praying for our children here in church, Recently, I was in a local school doing uh, their Christmas assemblies, just before the Christmas holidays. Uh, I went into one of our local primary schools, and it's one of my favourite schools. I love going into this particular school, just in case the head's watching. And as always, we did their Christmas assemblies, and over the, over the course of three back-to-back -back assemblies, worked my way through the entire school. And in each assembly, I'd say to the children, right, who can tell me what's coming up? And everyone, Christmas, Christmas, is great. Next question. What's Christmas all about? Every hand went up. It's about food. Great. What else? Presents. Yes, amazing. What else? Family. Yes, it is. What else? Giving. Yes, what else? Silence. Okay. Here's a hint, because I heard that you've just been doing your Christmas play, your nativity. Why do you think Christmas is special for Christians? Silence. There was not a single child in that school that could tell me the real meaning of Christmas. I've told you similar stories in a different school where I've had similar conversations at Easter and one child in that school could tell us what Easter was about and that's a child that comes to this church. Friends, we need to pray for our children. There is an entire generation coming up that knows nothing of God. Let's pause and let's pray right now. Father, we've just sung together about how good you are. How wonderful you are. How powerful you are. And we know that scripture tells us to share that good news with our children and our children's children and, 
And so it breaks our heart to see so many who know nothing of you. And we pray for those children right now. We pray that in your way, you would reveal something of yourself to them. We pray for gospel conversations to happen around the dinner table at home. We pray for Christians who work with children and young people. Would you use them powerfully? in this generation. Right now we think of our own children and youngsters, those who have gone out to children's church, those who aren't with us today, those who are part of our youth group on Fridays. Father, we thank you so much for the blessing that they are to this church family. We thank you for the responsibility that you have entrusted us with to share your good news with them. And so firstly, we pray for those who have just gone out to Children's Church that they would meet with you. Lord, not just that they'd learn about you, but that they would know what it is to walk with you. And so meet with them in this time that they spend together in their groups right now. And Father, we pray that you would use those same children as they head into school, as they share with their friends, as they have contact with and access to people that we will never do, would you use them as witnesses amongst their friends? Give them courage as they follow you even when it's not fashionable. Give them boldness to serve you even when it's not easy. Keep them faithful to you, we pray. And Lord, would you raise up more people who will work with our youngsters, who will share good news with our children. We pray as you asked us to send workers into the harvest. Have your way amongst our children, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together once more before we look to Scripture. and uh, So let's stand and worship together.
Do take a seat. If you've got a Bible, uh, either a, a hard copy one or one on your phone, do grab it and let's turn into Exodus together. Uh, if you're new to finding your way around a Bible, Exodus is easy to find. It's the second book in the Bible. So start in the beginning and flick over a few pages, and after Genesis you will get to Exodus. And today let's read uh, from Exodus chapter 20. Uh, just a short reading today, Exodus 20 from verses 8 to 11. Uh, this comes amidst the Ten Commandments. You'll recognize it, I'm sure, as we get to these words, but just to set them in context, reading from part of the Ten Commandments, and here's commandment number four. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. We thank God for his word. And as we mentioned uh, over the last couple of weeks, today uh, and in the coming weeks, we're taking some time uh, based on a line in, in the book of 3 John. Don't worry about turning, but at the other end of the Bible, 3 John, verse 2, where John writes, Dear friend, I hope that all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. And what I said we'd do over the coming weeks is take some time to reflect not just on how we're doing spiritually, but what does the Bible have to say about our physical health, our emotional health? Because God cares just as much about that as he does about our, our spiritual health. Who's tired? Who's maybe come through lockdown and just feeling a bit worn down and exhausted? Mm -hmm. Who's done with COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Every hand, yeah, we know that one. We all get tired, don't we? We all get to a point where we've just had enough and we're, and we're, we're worn out. Whatever you do as your day job, if you work, chances are that it's been a crazy time. I can only speak for mine. The last couple of years have been a rough time to be a pastor. It has been ridiculously busy. It's impossible to plan ahead. I don't know now, even as we're reopening, I don't know what our church looks like post-COVID. The needs pastorally and the burden that comes with that has been sky high. It has been absolutely non-stop and uh, no real break. Even things that normally give relief, even though they work, going into schools, home visits, hospital visits, None of those really have happened over the last couple of years. It has been non-stop. If you're a teacher, it'll have been the same. If you are a healthcare worker, it'll be the same. If you work in retail, it'll have been the same. If you have caring responsibilities, it'll have been the same. We're all worn out, aren't we? Friends, I want to remind you today that God cares. God sees where you are. He sees how you are. And he cares. And what do we see in these verses that we've just read? That God gives rest and he wants you to take it. And I'm preaching to myself as much as I am to you today. God gives rest and he wants you to take it. If you've got your Bible open at Exodus 20, 
What do we see in verse 11? For in six days God made the heavens, the earth, the sea, everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. You see, if even God needs to rest, then guess what? So do you. If even God takes a day to rest, why would you think that you don't need sometimes just to pause and to take time out? If even God pauses for a day while he's making the world and then takes a day to rest, why do we see it as a weakness sometimes just to pause and admit that we need to stop for a bit? Do you notice in these verses that God provided a day to rest? And then he enshrined it in law in the commandments. He blessed it as holy. Now, if you've got a Bible, look with me in Genesis chapter 1. Let's have a look at the the first things that God blesses. First thing that God blesses in creation in Genesis is living creatures. We see that in Genesis 1 verse 22. God blessed them. Let me read from verse 21. God created sea creatures and and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw... Let me just check that. Is that power or anything? Oh, it's Wi-Fi. Okay. Hopefully we're not losing people online. Uh, Even if we are, you're my priority. Where do we get to? Verse 21, 22. God created sea creatures, every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. First thing God blesses is living creatures. Second thing God blesses, verse 28, people. Verse 27, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. That's the second thing God blesses. The next thing God blesses, turn over the page into chapter 2. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. You see, after God blessed living beings, after God blessed uh, humans, the next thing that is blessed by God is a day off. How good is that? Do you remember the, do you remember the story in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 2? Jesus gets accosted by Pharisees. Let me read it to you. Feel free to turn Mark chapter 2, or uh, don't worry if not, it's just a passing reference. Mark 2, verse 23. One day as Jesus... One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abiathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. Some translations say the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so he goes on, so the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. What's going on here? The the mindset that the Pharisees had was that the Sabbath was there as as a ritual. It was a day to look holy. And some of you look super holy today. You look amazing. It was a day to sound holy. It was a day to think holy thoughts and and not to do anything else because that was the way that you would please God. And what does Jesus say? In verse 27 in that chapter, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Jesus says the Sabbath is... uh, isn't, isn't a ritual that you just go through and you tick the boxes. The Sabbath, says Jesus, is a, is a routine. It is a, a rhythm to be built into our lives to help us. 
What is Sabbath? Why does it matter? It comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat. It just means to rest, to cease from work, to stop what you're doing. And God's command was, was very simple. Take one day. Take one day, make it different from all the others. Set it apart for God. And this one day is to be a day of rest and a day of worship. What I find interesting, if you've got Exodus 20 open, look with me at verse 10. The seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord's your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. In other words, as God gives this commandment, it's not just saying to the people that he's speaking to, rest. By extension, they are to set the culture and the routine for those in their household, those in their family. Some translations say those within your gates. I wonder what it looks like for us as people of God, not just to set aside time to rest, but to set the routine, to set the culture for our household, for our family, to allow time for rest and for worship. What else do we see about this Sabbath day? Just three things that I'd love to share with you today. Why uh, Scripture says that Sabbath matters. Here's the first one. Exodus cites God's work of creation as the basis for the commands to set aside a day of rest. If you're with me in Exodus 20, let's look again in verse 11. In six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath and set it apart as holy. Still in Exodus, flick forward into chapter 31. And look with me from verse 12. The Lord then gave these instructions to Moses... Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day, for the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It is given so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day must be a Sabbath day of complete rest, a holy day dedicated to the Lord. Anyone who works on the Sabbath must be put to death. That's me in trouble, isn't it? The people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all time. It is a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he stopped working and was refreshed. What do we see in Exodus? Two things. God's work in creation as a basis for a day of rest, and secondly, God's work of sanctification. Uh, we just saw that in those verses. God made you holy. In other words, the Sabbath, this one day a week that we uh, are supposed to take time to pause and to break and to rest, is a time for us to remember, here's the deal, that you were made by God. You were made by God for his pleasure and his purpose. It's a time to remember that you belong to him. That you are set apart for him. It's a time to remember that you have a, a God-given freedom and ability to do your own thing Monday through Saturday, but also you have an inbuilt need for a rhythm of rest. You have an inbuilt need for time set apart for God. Are you with me? 
God made you. You belong to him. He has a plan for you. He's given you gifts. He's given you a job. He's given you things to do. But he's also given you a need to pause and rest. Second thing I'd love us to see, Deuteronomy. So Exodus tells us uh, that we need to rest because, uh, well, because of God's work in creation and his work in sanctification. Deuteronomy tells us about God's work of salvation as the basis for the command to rest. Look with me in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And the words are very similar but slightly different. Deuteronomy 5, let's read from verse 12. Here's what we see. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. And verse 15, remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. You see that? In Exodus, we're told, this is why God has told you to rest on the Sabbath day, because in six days God made the world, and on the seventh day he rested. Now he gets Deuteronomy. The reason that we're told to rest on the seventh day is because the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand and a powerful arm. What do I want us to see in these verses? There's an emphasis in those words, on allowing the workers, on allowing servants, the same opportunity to rest. Even the animals are to be afforded the same opportunity to rest. Why? Verse 15 said, because you yourselves were slaves. Because you were slaves and God brought you out of Egypt. Let's remind ourselves what it meant for the Israelites to be slaves. Exodus chapter 11. No, Exodus chapter 1, sorry. Exodus chapter 1, verse 11. Here's what we see about the Israelites as slaves. The Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Pithom and Ramesses as supply centers for the king. And verse 13 So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. You see, when the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt, it was non-stop. It was heavy. It was hard work. It was brutal. And what happened? God freed them. He delivered them from that slavery and And friends, here's the deal. If you live a life that is constantly working, you're a slave again. What are you a slave to? Maybe you find yourself becoming a slave to money. Because you'll do anything all the time just to make sure that you make that little bit more. You can't stop working. You need to work every shift that you get. You need to work all weekend because you need the money. And you become a slave to money. Maybe you become a slave to power. Because you're desperate to rise up the ranks and get a promotion and and a higher position. Maybe you become a slave to popularity and status because I need people to see me and like me and so I need to keep doing whatever it will take to be more popular. If you are constantly on the go without taking time to stop and rest and set aside time to God, you are a slave again. And the Bible makes a choice clear. Either it says we are a slave to sin or we are a slave to Jesus Christ. Who do you belong to? Do you belong to your boss? Do you belong to your business? Do you belong to Instagram? 
Or do you belong to Jesus? Friends, if you belong to Jesus Christ, nothing else should have such a hold on your life that you can't get away from it. Do you hear me? Now I get it. As I say that, there are some of you who are like, Pastor, you really don't get it. If I don't work every available shift, I'm not going to pay the rent. And I hear you. I've been there. But I promise you this. If God has told you to set aside one day to rest and to worship because you belong to him, God is not going to see you go hungry. We'd love to pray in just a moment. And if that's you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to stand. But as we pray in just a little while, one of, one of the things that we'll pray for is for God's provision. That as we are faithful in setting aside time to rest and to worship, that God will honour that and be faithful to you and provide for your needs. So in Exodus, we set aside time to worship because it reminds us that God made us and set us apart for him. In Deuteronomy, we set aside time to rest and to worship because it reminds us that God has set us free from slavery. Now we get into the New Testament, and and the third and final one, the New Testament gets interesting. And here's why. The New Testament affirms, do you remember those words we read form part of the Ten Commandments? The New Testament affirms each of the other nine commandments. Think of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no God before me. And the New Testament is clear. Worship God and God alone. What else do we find? Honour your father and mother. New Testament backs it up. Don't be a thief. New Testament backs it up. Don't commit adultery. New Testament backs it up. Don't want what you've not got. Be, and the New Testament backs it up. Be content with what you have. Commandment number four about the Sabbath. The New Testament doesn't back it up. It nullifies it. Stay with me. If you've got a Bible, look with me in Colossians. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. I think those online are having a tough time today. Colossians 2, from verse 16. Paul writes, Don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. So don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying that they've had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud and they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body. For he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments and it grows as God nourishes it. But if you don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating holy days, ceremonies or Sabbaths, for those rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come and that reality yet to come is Jesus. In other words, those routines of Sabbath rest point us to the ultimate rest that is only found in Jesus. I wonder how many of you, as we've gone through the last couple of years, maybe you've had days off, maybe you've booked weeks off, but you're still run down. Anyone else? Certainly me. Because a day of rest is great, but it's not all there is. We need more than just a a day off, don't we? Here's what Hebrews says about the ultimate rest that is found in Christ. This is Hebrews 4. 
God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them, but it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in my anger I took an oath, they will never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it's ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words quoted, Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labours, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. You see, Scripture promises a special time of rest for the people of God. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get there. A time when everything else will drop away and it will just be us and God and worship and rest. But even before that, right here, right now, God is able to offer you a rest that nothing else and no one else can. A rest that goes beyond a day to sleep. A rest that you won't find anywhere else. Jesus said, Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Anyone see themselves in those verses right now? Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. It's not I might. It's not when you die and go to heaven you'll be able to rest. Come to me right now and I will give you rest. Who's Jesus speaking to? He's not just speaking to his disciples, although he is. And so if you're uh, a follower of Jesus already and uh, you're part of our church but the going is tough, Jesus offers you rest. But I want you to look with me at the beginning of the chapter. Matthew 11, verse 1. When Jesus had finished giving these instructions to his 12 disciples, he went out to teach and preach in towns throughout the region. And that's where he stays, and that is the context of these verses. You see, Jesus is uh, travelling around here, there and everywhere, speaking to anyone and everyone who will listen. Those who are his followers and those who are a whole long way from, from him, and the offer is the same. If you are tired right now, if you don't know how much more you can take, if you are carrying stuff that you are not meant to carry, come to me. And I will give you rest. Friends, let me ask you two questions. Firstly, what can you do this week or in the coming weeks to build into your routine, to build into your rhythm of life, 
times to rest and spend time with God. What changes can you make to your schedule to prioritise setting aside times of rest? I promise it will do you the world of good. You might want to join me in my ambition for this year. So far I'm not doing very well at it, but I'll start again from tomorrow. Every day... Will you find one window, maybe an hour, maybe half an hour? And each day, set aside just a short period of time to stop and to rest. Maybe on your lunch break, go out for a walk. Every day, find an hour, half an hour. Every week, will you take a day? Every year, will you take a week? What can you do to schedule into your routine, build into your rhythm of life, times of rest and worship? Make that commitment before God today. Second question. I wonder if there's anyone either in church with us today or online. And right now you are tired and you are burdened. I wonder if today is your time, as Jesus said, to come to him and find his rest. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life right now. Fix me. Help me. Give me rest. Why don't we pray? Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for the reminder that you made us. You set us apart for you. You gave us gifts. You give us things to do. But you also build into us a need to stop, to rest, to reconnect with you and to be refreshed. And right now we pray for, for ourselves and for those around us because we're tired. Lord, right now, by your Spirit, would you give us your rest? Take from us the burdens that we are carrying. The cares, the worries that consume us. And give us your peace. But we say that we're sorry for the times that we've pushed ourselves and, and worked and worked and kept ourselves flat out doing everything except taking time to stop and to rest and spend time with you. Would you forgive us and would you help us to build into our routines and our rhythms of life times to rest, times to worship, times to be refreshed? Would you give us discipline and boldness? Would you give us the courage to sometimes say no when we need to? 
And then we pray particularly for those for whom building in times away from work will be difficult. Father, we pray for your provision. And we pray that as we honour you in our routines, would you be faithful to us? Would you meet our needs? Father, I pray for each person in this church and those watching online that they would uh, have a testimony like David's that I was young, now now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Meet our needs as we honour you, we pray. And Lord, we know that beyond a day off, beyond a week away, important though they are, true rest is only found in you. And so I pray that you will draw each one of us closer to you right now. For those who right now feel far from you, would you come near? Would you give them the assurance of your ultimate rest in eternity, but also right now? Meet with us by your spirit in these moments, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Nice one, nice one. Let's stand and sing uh, together. As we've been reminded that we were made by God, set apart by God, set free from slavery by God and offered ultimate rest by God, it's it's a good moment to share in communion together as we remind ourselves what that costs. Let me invite you, if you're with us in church, to take Uh, your communion cups if you have them if you've come in since we started and you don't have a communion cup and if you'd like to share communion with us do uh, give us a wave and Ralph at the back will gladly get one to you Uh, if you're with us online at home uh, do take whatever you have to hand juice and bread or anything similar and we'd love to uh, share with you as well as we share communion 
as a church, we do things a little bit differently at the moment because COVID. But what hasn't changed is that we welcome anyone to share communion with us. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be above a certain age. You don't have to have your life perfectly in order. If you love God, if you know that he loves you, if you would like to share communion as a way of remembering and giving thanks for uh, the death of Jesus for you, then you're very welcome to do that. Scripture tells us that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. Let me invite you to peel back the, the top layer and take out the wafer. Eat it in your own time as you give thanks to God. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And so this cup is the new covenant that has been poured out in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in memory of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let me invite you to peel back the second layer. Let's keep hold of it and uh, drink together as a reminder of our unity as one family, whether we're here, online, Let's drink together. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus that while we were still sinners, the Bible says Christ died for us. Thank you for the forgiveness, the freedom, the newness of life that can be found in you because of this shed blood. And Lord, in these moments as we share together in those simple reminders of bread and juice, would you Remind us afresh of just how much you love us. May we see your plans, your purposes brought about in our lives. We're reminded as well that scripture tells us that it's by his stripes that we are healed. And so in these moments, we want to bring before you those in our church family who we know, or those in our our own family or amongst our friends who are unwell at this time. We pray for those unwell. We pray for those who are in pain. And right now we pray that you would bring healing. Lord, it's you who made us. It's only you that that can fix us and restore us. And so uh, bring healing right now, we pray. We remember those who would love to be present with us but are not able to be. Would you draw near to them? Thank you for the reminder as we share in one loaf and one cup that we are one family. And so we remember those who aren't with us right now. Bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Nice one. Children, welcome back. Uh, How was Children's Church? Who would like to tell us what's been going on today? Oh, look at that. You are reliable every time. Uh, First hands, right. Ashwin's like, were you in different groups or the same group today? 
You're in different groups. Right, Zaya, why don't you start us off? What happened in your group today? So we learned that we should honour our parents no matter what they do uh -huh. and do what the Bible says. Uh -huh. And the Bible verse was, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and men. Nice one, nice one. So about being, being good to your mum and dad? Because Jesus was, apart from the time he ran away for a few days. Don't do that. Uh, nice one, nice one. All right, Asha, what did you do in your group? We learned about that we can always talk to God because he's always next to us and that he is always trying to get us to be with him like the, like, like the way he is with us. Amazing. You can talk to God anytime because he's always with you. Uh, and can I show everyone your picture? Is that all right? Uh, this is Asha's picture. It says, I love to be in my father's house. Uh, nice one, nice one. Uh, cool, it's great to be in the house of God, isn't it? Uh, but God's with you even when you're not in church, when you're at home. Anyone else got anything to add from Children's Church? Anything that Ash or Zaya missed from either of your groups? Don't all jump at once? Or is that a fairly thorough su summary? Uh, yeah, all right. Leaders of the Children's Church groups, are you happy with what was described? Yeah, you're happy? You're happy? Nice one, nice one. All right, well, thank you for, thank you for telling us. As we approach the end of our time uh, together, we'll sing once more in just a moment, but just a few uh, heads up. So remember, if you're uh, new with us today, we'd love to connect with you. Do grab one of the postcards as you leave or uh, click the link in the video or head online if you're with us online. And uh, don't be a stranger. Don't rush out the door. Do uh, stick around and say hi afterwards. Um, those of you who are a regular part of our church family, remember I mentioned last week there are still some Christmas cards on the table at the back that were left for various folk. Um, if you're with us in church and you've not yet checked, if you have any cards there, do check today. Um, and today will be the last chance. I say that lovingly. Check for your Christmas cards, otherwise they will go in the recycling. Um, that's great. Um, now, as we head into the new year, um, I wonder if anyone's New Year's resolution was to volunteer at church. Anyone? Everyone? Oh, come on. <laughs> Just in case your New Year's resolution was to kind of get stuck in at church, um, we've got some vacancies that we'd love uh, some help with. If you have some time to get involved serving on either of these teams in particular, um, if you have some time, perhaps just on a rotor basis, maybe once a month, once every four, five, six weeks, uh, to come in at some point during the week to help keep the church clean. So that doesn't need to be on a Sunday. It can be any time during the week. Um, if you'd be willing to get involved doing that just once, once a month or so, um, there's some vacancies on our cleaning rotor. Um, we've got some space on our media team rotor. If you fancy helping with our camera or our computer, uh, we'll tell you how, but it's easy as anything. If that's something you'd like to get involved in, uh, speak to us. And our children's church. Uh, we mentioned earlier just how important our children's ministry is right now. Um, and right now our children and our youth team are running on absolute bare bones, um, which means that they're not getting much time to rest. If you would like to be involved in helping with our children's church, uh, do speak to me or Nikki. Obviously, for that one, there'll be a couple more hoops to jump through and some checks to do um, first, but we'll talk you through it. Um, yeah, either of those, there are plenty of vacancies if you would like to get involved. We're back here same time next week, 11 o'clock, in person and also online. Um, and final thing, as we've worshipped together through uh, singing, through sharing communion, through looking to scripture together, we want to worship as well through our giving. And uh, if you're able to give today, thank you very much. Uh, the easiest way to give uh, online is chingforcong.org.uk forward slash give. If you're with us in church and would like to use the giving envelopes, they're available in the entrance, and there's a box that envelopes or, or gifts can be left in. Uh, and yeah, let's give today as an act of worship, as we trust God to to meet our needs. But right now, let's stand. We're going to worship once more, and then we will uh, go and enjoy the rest of the day of rest. <laughs> if you're with us online today, um, I don't know quite how disruptive things were today. If it was chaos, I'll double check. Um, then later this afternoon, we'll upload the recording uh, of the talk, if nothing else. But sorry if uh, our online thing has been disrupted today. Uh,
Nice one. Well, thank you again for joining us. And uh, I pray that this week, I pray you'd have a great week. I pray that you'd know God with you. I pray that he'd provide for you, bless you, protect you. And I pray that you'd take time to rest and be refreshed. And as you go from here, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.